Hello my beautiful friends, it's Mimi here today and today we're all gathered here to discuss August favorites and as I always sit down to film these favorites videos I feel like I don't have a lot to share with you and then I sort of gather all the items together and I realize I actually do have a lot of very exciting things I want to share with you so are you guys ready to hear about the August favorites? Let's get started! I'm gonna start with a favorite that is sort of not a tangible thing it's a concept that a friend of mine has shared with me and the friend is Jess Lively well her name is Jess but she has a podcast called Jess Lively if you haven't heard about it check it out it's really great inspirational stuff thought-provoking subjects so Jess was here in London we just went out for dinner Alex and I and her and she told me about this really cool thing she watched in a movie she said the movie wasn't even that great it's the movie called Happy Thank You Yes, please. I think happy. Thank you more, please or something like that. I'll link it down below But the concept in the movie there was this one scene where one of the characters was talking about the fact how she was in a cab and She was talking to the cab driver and the cab driver sort of shared this profound wisdom with her and the wisdom was anytime you like something in your life say Thank you more please and this can be anything it could be you know you having a really great day and at the end of the day you're going to sleep and you have this elevated feeling where you just feel very happy light and excited and in that moment you sort of stop and pause and take a moment for gratitude and say thank you more please and I think a lot of us feel a bit guilty to ask for more and here's where I believe it, it is actually very important to communicate with the universe, the creator, whatever you believe in to be comfortable with asking more for more experiences that you would like to sort of manifest in your life because a lot of us focus on the opposite so like we'll have negative experiences and we'll be complaining and telling all these friends and family members about how our day sucked and this happened and this you know all these negative things in the media and just around the world that we hear all the time but by doing that we sort of attract that so here is the complete opposite concept and it totally goes along with everything let's say Alex and I do that's why I use the five-minute journal every single day because I mean Alex and I we and our friend UJ we created this product for ourselves because we believe that gratitude is just something that is the foundation of being a happy person if you're not grateful in your life well the lighting just changed it became really really sunny but Going back to my point, if you're not grateful in your life, if you don't have gratitude in your heart, and I'm not just saying intellectually feeling, you know, saying things like, yes, I am grateful, I have a house and I have this, my parents, my family, but actually feeling that gratitude, when you feel it, you're the wealthiest person in the world and regardless of where you are in life and what you have in life we can all find something that we're grateful for so I just really wanted to connect these two concepts together I started doing this and I would definitely encourage you guys to do the same anytime you have a great day or maybe you meet a person who's really cool and you'd like to meet more people like that you just kind of like whisper to the universe say thank you more please and uh, yeah I think it's really cute it's super positive and again it goes along with what I practice daily with Alex which is you know just doing five minutes a day and focusing on gratitude you know just taking a moment to think of all the little things you're grateful for it could just be one two three but just reshaping your mind and your mindset to always focus on what you have instead of what you don't have and that truly changes your whole world and the more you practice it because I've been now doing this journal for over three, three years and I mean gratitude is something I've been practicing for longer but in particular the journal I've been doing for three years and I feel like now that I've been doing it for more than three years I actually feel the effects of it even more it's like gratitude is always on my mind and I always feel it in my heart and I've honestly can say that I have never ever felt so grateful in my life and gratitude always translates into joy and peace and it's just something I wanted to start the favorites today because at the end of the day all the stuff is cool and nice but I have gratitude and that's sort of the biggest gift I have in my life is having that gratitude every day when I wake up being present and aware and grateful for all of the little things and most of them are not even material things actually 99% of them are not it's the feelings, it's the people in your life and that's totally what I believe makes a person a happy human being 
On that philosophical note, I'm gonna share a favorite book of the month and I'm having a hard time thinking about how I can talk about this book without giving away too much because it's a really short audiobook or of course you can read the physical book. I prefer the audiobook because I think they did a phenomenal job at reading it, whoever was reading it. It's called Ishmael and it's by the author called Daniel Quinn. And this is a book I've read years ago and sometimes I just go back to the books that I've read that really impacted my life and the way I look at the world. And for some reason I was going through our Audible account, Alex and I share one, and I was like, I feel like reading this book again or listening, okay, listening to it because I'm not technically reading it. And it's a really short two or three hour audio book that truly makes you look at life differently. And it challenges you to ask yourself questions, it challenges your world, it sort of shifts your mind to look at the world differently. And all I'm gonna say is that it's a philosophical novel about our world and humanity and our civilization and our place in it. And I think if you love nature, if you love humans, if you like life, if you love life, then this is a book definitely for you. I don't wanna give away too much because if I start talking about the plot, then it's not gonna be exciting for you to listen to it. And I think that was the most interesting part is there's so many interesting twists in the book that you don't expect as you listen to it. It's a beautiful story. It's like watching a movie, but you're listening to it. So I definitely recommend it. It's sort of going to definitely shift your world. There will be a before and after, after you listen to this book. And it definitely makes you think about how you can be a better human in this world and yeah, just make make your little world a little better. That's all I'm gonna say <laughs> for the rest. You'll have to listen to the book if you want a little bit of inspiration and a little bit of content that will open your mind, then definitely read Ishmael. All right, moving on to some cravings. Well, not really cravings because I like sweets generally. And I usually satisfy my sweet cravings by having chocolates that don't have sugar. It doesn't mean I never have sugar, of course I do, because I still have some dark chocolate that has conventional sugar. But if I can, I always try to find something that has alternatives to sugar. So I first saw this chocolate at Planet Organic. It's a health store here in London. And I picked it up really because I thought the packaging is super cool. I always like products with really cool packaging. And then I was like, oh, this is a chocolate. <laughs> okay, let me see. And then the next thing I always do when I pick up something that is a consumable product is I turn the back, I turn the product to the back and I start reading the ingredient list. And I think that's something that I encourage everyone to do because I think it's so important to know what's in your product. Many people, let's say my mom would always go to like a health food store or Whole Foods and she'd be like, this is healthy, I bought it at Whole Foods. And I'm like, mom, not everything you buy at Whole Foods is healthy. You have to re read the ingredients. Anyway, so I'm just gonna read the ingredients of this chocolate. And they have many different flavors, but this one is my absolute favorite. The first ingredient is evaporated coconut nectar. So that's the substitute for sugar. It's sort of a coconut sugar that has a low glycemic index, so it breaks down differently in your body doesn't spike as much, um, doesn't spike your sugar level as much. Then it's virgin cocoa butter, cocoa, coconut, raw cocoa beans, wild-crafted bean. I think it's some kind of a, um, they explain it here in the packaging, is this thing from Australia, it's supposed to be really good for you. And then mandarin essential oil, and I absolutely love the smell of mandarin, the taste of mandarin and then cardamom. It's like my all favorite things together in one. And yeah, really cool story. I think it's an Australian brand. Not sure if they sell it in US. I'll try to find all the links to everything I mentioned and put in the info box. But yeah, the cocoa beans come from Amazon. So really cool brand, really cool, smooth, delicious chocolate. I don't know if you guys ever tried raw vegan chocolate because that's what this one is, but they always have a much more smoother, creamier texture. So I try not to eat too many of them. And they do come in like a small package and a big package. So I bought both because this one goes by too fast. But yeah, if you want a nice sweet uh, little treat, then definitely give these a shot. Next favorite of the month is a fashion item and it's a t-shirt dress from American Apparel. And honestly, I'm so grateful these exist because I've practically been living in them. I am now 37 plus weeks pregnant, almost 38 weeks pregnant. I can get up actually to show you my little bumpy. Hello, hello. I think she's dropping. But 
everything that I wear has to be sort of soft and stretchy and light because I cannot bother to be wear to wear anything that's too structured or just heavy fabrics or materials. So yeah, I've been literally wearing all these kind of t-shirt dresses and I wish they had more colors. They actually do have it in black and I think I have it in black as well. Very nice, very lightweight, sort of hugs the body nicely, but is also very, very flattering even when you're nine months pregnant. So yeah, I really love this dress. It's a bit short now, but what I'm gonna tell you guys is I'm gonna move on to my other favorite. Give me one second because a lot of you girls, well, mostly girls, ask me, how is it, Mimi, that you wear all these short dresses or how is it that you cycle in skirts? And it's very simple. These are called dancer shorts or cycle shorts and you can get them at American Apparel because they have a lot of dancer stuff. But you can also get them at H&M and all these other stores. Again, I'm gonna link everything I can find down below. I think every woman should have at least two of these. And I have several. I have one in nude because it's great. If you're wearing something white, let's say, you want a nude color because black would be too obvious. And then I have two or three in black because I always lose them. It's like I wanna wear it and then I'm like running around the house trying to find a pair of shorts and I can't find it. So I wanna make sure that I have enough of them so I never lose them. So the way these work, just when you buy it, make sure that you get the right things is that they should be very lightweight. They're usually a bit more higher on the waist but it's, they're also longer on your legs, so they kind of go quite low. If you're cycling in a skirt or if you're just wearing a short dress, you don't have to worry about the wind blowing or you, I don't know, like just moving in any way that could expose a part of your body in a, not a very flattering way. So yeah, a complete life-saving item that every person, every woman should have in her wardrobe or anyone who wears skirts, that is. So make sure to invest in a pair of dancing shorts or cycle shorts and then you never have to worry about wearing short dresses and exposing yourself. All right, while we're on a fashion topic, I will mention one more thing that is not a new thing either. This non-leather jacket, although it does look like leather, this is um, fall leather or pleather, whichever you want to call it. And I've got this jacket three years ago, but it remains my absolute favorite. I wore it last month almost every single day because Although the weather in London has been really hot, the evenings are still quite chilly. So whenever I run out of the house in the morning, I just grab this and usually in the evenings it is chilly. So I'll just put it over my shoulders. And this kind of jacket, it's sort of a fitted leather jacket, goes really nice over everything. If you're wearing jeans and a t-shirt, if you're wearing a floral dress, if you're wearing a maxi dress, literally, it goes with everything. And that's why whenever I'm in doubt, I just grab it because I know it's gonna sort of spice up any outfit and keep me warm at the same time. And I bought this three years ago, I think. It was probably about three years ago because I remember it was when we moved to London. And this one is from River Island. I will try to, I know they don't sell this particular one anymore, but I will try to find something similar and link it down below. And one more thing I wanted to mention because you guys know I don't wear leather. A lot of people are under misconception that, oh, if you wear non leather, it like looks bad or like it falls apart. I've had this jacket for three years and I'm gonna show you, like it looks brand new. There's nothing absolutely nothing that has been tarnished in three years. If anything, I believe, because I've, I've worn real leather jackets before, when I used to wear leather, if I had a real leather jacket, within a year, things would like stretch out and sort of sag, especially around arms, because that's real skin of an animal. Um, the same thing doesn't happen with non-leather um, items like this one, for example. Obviously, it still has to be a quality-made piece, which this jacket is, although it wasn't expensive at all. Anyways, just wanted to share with you guys. We'll try to find something similar, link it down below, but I absolutely love this jacket. It's my favorite. A little accessory I wanna share with you is this beautiful pen by Hay. I absolutely love really pretty pens. I don't know, it's a new thing of mine. I guess it's because I like to take pictures sometimes, I'm styling things, but also just Day to day, it makes you feel good when you're using a really nice fancy pen. And this one wasn't an, exp wasn't an expensive. Alex, how much was it? It still was expensive. Yeah, was it? But I mean, there's yeah. some pens that are like in hundreds of dollars. This one was seven pounds. Seven pounds, which is about $15. 
but I think it looks way more expensive. I love the brand Hay, so it's by the brand Hay. They have a lot of really cool stationery and accessories. So again, I'll try to find the link and link it down below. I bought it in a store here somewhere on uh, High Street Kensington in London but they do sell it online. Super cute, they have it in many different colors and it's just a nice little pen to have to, you know, just brighten up your day as you're working, if you need to use a pen that is, because a lot of us are just typing on the computers, but I mainly use it as I use my productivity planner. And last but not least, I wanna share something a little bit unconventional for my favorites because it is succulent. <laughs> I never talked about live things, but there's always a first time. And I've been loving succulents for the last few months, actually almost a year now. And I first started to get them for the office because I wanted to add something green to our office to make it more alive. And I'm not really crazy about really big plants because you have to water them more and just require more maintenance with succulents. You don't have to water them as often. Usually it's about every two to three weeks, depending on the plant. So we have a lot of them now. I have another one here. And what I usually do is when I get them, and I name them and I actually talk to them and I actually sort of pet them because they're alive. It's like their energy. And if you just neglect them, sometimes we'll go away for a few weeks. And I always get somebody to water them. But when we come back from traveling, if we're gone for two, three weeks, I can always tell that they're a bit sad because nobody was talking to them. It breaks my heart. So anyways, <laughs> we have a few corners in the house. Um, we'll put them up at the kitchen, um, like a window ledge. We did the same thing in the bathroom, in both of our bathrooms. And I think it just adds a really nice, sort of a hipster touch too, because if you go to any cool shops at the moment or really cool restaurants, you'll see there's succulents everywhere in really cute little pots. And they don't have to cost a lot. You can buy them online or in real in stores and you can find pots to match them or sometimes you can find them already potted. But I think it's a really great way to add aliveness to your space and make it look really cool. And that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Now it's your turn. Make sure to leave me a comment and let me know what's your August favorites. I love learning and hearing from you guys. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you soon. Bye.